That's something I took seriously. You know, we all know what the Second Amendment says, right? But the Washington State Constitution is even more explicit than the federal Constitution. Article 1, Section 24 says that the right of an individual citizen to bear arms in defense of himself or the state shall not be impaired. That's pretty clear, right? I'm still wondering if Jay Inslee took my advice in the debate and had his grandkids read it to him. <laughs> you guys saw the debate, right? Oh, yeah. You guys are awesome. So, I knew I was not going to arrest 18 to 21 year olds because, I, you know, like I said, that violates their constitutional rights. And that stance, believe it or not, got me on the national news. I didn't know that it would be an anomaly for a public servant to stand up and say, no, I, you know, I took an oath, I promised. And it says right here in the Constitution that that's what I swore an oath to, and I'm you know, not going to do that. I didn't know that would be an anomaly and get me on the national news. But I did hundreds of radio and newspaper interviews all across this nation. And I was on Fox and Friends and the Tucker Carlson show. You know, we like Tucker Carlson, right? <laughs> now there's some common sense. I had no idea that was going to happen, but it did. And that led me to writing a book in December of 2018. I wrote a book called American Cop. And that book went to number one on Amazon in multiple categories, and it was a number one best-selling book on the Hot 100 new books list for weeks. That led me to being invited around the state to speak at Republican Party Day to Day dinners and sportsman shows to groups of citizens about our rights and responsibilities. And the responsibility of our public servants to stand up for citizens' rights. Article 1, Section 1 of the Washington State Constitution says that the power is inherent in the people and government is there to protect citizens' rights. Is that powerful or what? That's the very first thing that the founders of Washington State decided to write in the rule book for our government, which the Constitution is, that's the very first thing they thought of. The power is inherent in the people and government is there to protect their rights. That's amazing. So I knew that that was my responsibility to stand up for citizens. But I traveled around the state every single weekend after American Cop uh, was published. I was invited around to Lincoln Day Dinners and Sports Shows. Every single weekend I went somewhere in this state speaking to citizens about our rights and responsibilities. And people started asking me to run for governor. And at first I didn't think too much about it. You know, like I said, that was not my childhood dream to be a politician. I was living my childhood dream of being a police officer. But as it went into the spring and summer of 2019, more and more people had read American Cop, more and more people were coming out to hear me speak, and more and more people were asking me the same thing all over this state. And so I talked to Barb in July, Kind of like I did when I told her I wanted to go to the police academy at 49 years old. I said, if I, you know, we talk about our kids and our grandkids, and if I didn't jump in with both feet and try to help to turn this state around, that I would regret it for the rest of my life. And I don't live with regret. So that's, that's why I'm here right now, and that's why, with your help, we're going to kick Jay Inslee's ass out of office in November. Yeah. We have to do it, right? He is pissing everybody off, whether you're left or whether you're right or whether you're in the middle. He is messing up people's lives, their businesses, their life savings. There are so many businesses that are not coming back. They are done, closed for good. It's just pathetic. You know, th this virus came along, right? Is anybody happy with the way that he handled this? He decided who's essential, not an essential, right? Who's going to work and who's going to stay home and go broke? In fact, I, I call it his stay home, go broke order. 
So if you had an abortion clinic or a big box store or a pot store, you could stay open. But if you ran a church or a gun store or a mom and pop cafe or a salon or, or a barbershop, you had to close. And it didn't make any sense. The virus does not know which buildings you can go into and which you can't, right? <laughs> it's kind of like this, what he's got going on now. Remember, you, you couldn't go to a, a, a bar or a restaurant past 10 o'clock, right? Yeah. Yeah, and now he moved it to 11 to give us an incentive to do good, right? It's like, here's a cookie, little boy. Do good now. Are you kidding me? It doesn't make any sense. The virus doesn't watch the clock. I could go on and on about that. But shut down businesses, put people out of work. There's going to be more viruses. This is not the first time we've had a virus. You know, bird flu, swine flu, Ebola, they come and they go, right? And when I'm governor and the next virus comes around, I will have press conferences with the medical professionals to explain to everyone what's going on, what we should do to protect ourselves, what might happen if we don't follow the medical advice, and as governor, make sure the supply chain is as open as possible for the equipment and the supplies that are needed, and then let free individual citizens decide what's best for themselves, their family, and their business. If you cannot tell me or anyone with common sense that you can be safe in a big box store with 150 people, but by God, if you go to the barber shop by yourself, you're gonna die. It makes no sense whatsoever. Business owners know how to be safe. They know how to run their businesses. You know, a barber shop or a salon knows how to, how to run their business and be safe, just like a big box store, right? And think about it. Two of the businesses he shut down are constitutionally protected businesses. A church and a gun store. Protected by the Constitution. Amazing. It's about freedom and liberty. Individual freedom and liberty is what this country was founded on. Our forefathers fought and died against the world's superpower at the time to bring freedom to this land. And here we are in 2020 with a governor who's sitting in his office making decisions by himself. He will not even call a special session of our legislatures, which are the representatives of we the people. He won't even let them come to Olympia to have a say in this. And you know why? because he's spending $164,000 a week on a global consulting company. I think he spent a total of $1.2 million on this global consulting company to tell him what to do and how to act with this virus. That is not acceptable. He did not do that. Oh, that's right, you guys watched the debate. Nope, he didn't know anything about what I was talking about. Thank you. I have never